Oh, hey guys. So, uh, well, I'm back in Florida. It's kind of crazy. I've been uh, to Florida in March, then back to California, then back to Texas, and back to Florida. And I'm excited to say that uh, principal photography for uh, my movie about Mr. Hogan is complete. Um, maybe I'll pick up a couple extra things uh, because doors keep on opening, but uh, the full arc of the story is complete and I feel very, very excited about the film that I've made. Uh, I've been making films for over 20 years and made a lot of uh, TV shows and that's the thing that I'm really good at. and. I've been able to combine that with my golf, so, you know, I'm one pretty lucky guy. Uh, I'm really breathing a sigh of relief at this point. You know, it's been, uh, it's been very, very challenging, but there's something truly remarkable that I've learned during the course of my life, and it is the fact that if you just go do something, it's amazing what doors open up that you probably weren't aware of existed and uh, you know now I've become friends with a lot of pros and uh, I'm learning so I'm continuing to learn so much about different ways of looking at the swing you know I was just with a bunch of top players yesterday and one of the best ball strikers I've ever seen in my life uh, has a flip you know a pretty pronounced flip after the strike but as long as everything repeats and gets square into impact you can hit the ball pretty darn well. So, you know, I have my beliefs about the golf swing and uh, a lot of people have different views. Uh, but, you know, there's some pretty remarkable things, you know, that I've picked up along the way. Uh, one of the things that I think that I had a misconception about is the necessity of lateral side bend. And a couple years ago, that was a big thing I was trying to do is like, man, I gotta get more pinched on my right side. And I actually started to hurt my back. And uh, it was working with another professional that I started to see the swing more as the, the bottom half is turning and the top half is turning, but if the bottom half turns before the top half and you're looking down the line, it creates kind of a misconception. It makes it look as if the hips and the shoulders are bending more than they really are. It's just if the lower body's clearing first, it's if you have a line across your shoulders and a line across your hips, it's gonna look a little bit, uh, because of the perspective of the camera angle down the line, I think it makes it look like there's more lateral side bend than, you know, than there really is. Now, to try and go after lateral side bend, I think can cause some back problems. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm not doing that really anymore. I'm trying to basically turn more level through the ball, uh, you know, especially with my right side through the hip. And, you know, it's just one of those things you got to go explore. Now, one of the funny things that I've heard from a lot of uh, the guys that knew Mr. Hogan was, you know, there's no getting around hitting the golf balls and going to the driving range. You know, one of the tips that I heard that Mr. Hogan would give people all the time is like, you want to you want a tip? Go practice. Go to the driving range. And he used to tell people all the time, like, he'd just give them one nugget to work on, and then he'd say, now go hit your 10,000 golf balls. So if I hit 100 balls in a range session, say a, a large bucket or whatever, 10,000 golf balls, uh, yeah. That's a lot of range sessions. So in other words, you know, you kind of have to figure out how it applies to yourself. And that's one of the things I think is so important that I've learned during the course of my life. All the different physical movement disciplines and even be becoming a filmmaker later on in life. You know, I studied some film in college, but I really didn't consider myself to be a filmmaker until I actually began producing and directing professionally in Los Angeles on all these TV shows that I've done, you know? But if you just dive into something, that's the only thing that I've been good at in my lifetime is just 
having the guts to just dive straight into something. And it's amazing what you get to learn. And I've said this many times, a, a Zen mind is a beginner's mind. So if you can go into something and, and not believe that you've, I mean, it's nothing wrong with having beliefs and, and reinforcing those beliefs. And, you know, you get better at, at what you're working on. But, you know, it's amazing how much there is out there to learn. And I think people have known a lot about the golf swing for a very long time. You know, I'm still much, much closer to believing that it's more similar to a baseball swing than uh, a lot of people understand. But it's tricky because the ball is on the ground. If you pick that ball up a foot or two feet off the ground, then it's a much easier action to try and clear through the ball. That's why I usually always have a baseball bat at my clinics that I, I work with people on, you know, just to get that kind of proper feeling of sequencing from the ground up. Um, you know, and, uh, you know, I had a really fun time with uh, Lori Rinker yesterday, who uh, Lori, Larry, and Lee Rinker, they're all Floridians, and uh, all three of them played on the Pro Tours, you know. I mean, that's quite an accomplishment for a family. And uh, But watching Lori hit the ball, it's just, like, so incredible. You know, and Lori was talking to me about, you know, different types of core players, and uh, this is something I began uh, getting exposed to in Texas. And so when I head out to California, I'm looking uh, forward to catching up with a friend of Lori's to discuss these theories a little bit more about the golf swing. And one of these days, I hope to have a, a great summit where I can bring together the greatest teachers of the game and really kind of solidify some things that, you know, that we can all kind of coalesce around to help everybody play a lot better golf. You know, so... The lateral side bend thing, I think, is, uh, I think it can get overblown. And uh, because of my experience as a filmmaker, I realized, you know, there's kind of an optical illusion that uh, we're getting from the camera view down the line, you know, that may seem like it's, you know, more exaggerated than it needs to be. You know, and, and to be honest, like, you know, Tiger Woods has that stripe down the back of his shirts nowadays, and he has that big bend in his back you know, when he's going through the impact. I think that could be a large part of what's been causing his back troubles. And he's such a hard worker that if you think that that's what you're supposed to be doing, I'm sure he's going to commit to it 100,000%. But, uh, you know, it's just, uh, it's tough on the back is all I can say. And I've even been having some trouble with my knees, you know, um, after I was doing some long drive stuff, I don't think I warmed up properly. My right knee blew up, man. It was just like, man, I think I really overdid it. And uh, there's something about adrenaline. You don't realize what you're doing at the time. And then once you cool down, it's like, uh-oh, I think I did something wrong. So, uh, you know, I just have to be careful about that and use my lower body properly. But, you know, but what I'm doing today is, you know, taking a breath. I've really been killing myself for the last two months, um, but I think what I've been able to accomplish with the help of many, many amazing people, my subscriber base is the greatest open source group of people to help me learn about Mr. Hogan and people I can speak to and everything else. I can't thank you all enough. You know, my friends like Colby, Seth, Gordon, you know, that's just incredible. I've made a lot of new friends. You know, I'd like to thank Gilbert Little for opening doors for me, you know. I mean, and these are people that, you know, it's so crazy. I, I meet people randomly, and, and it just becomes this amazing new adventure. And uh, it's really, really challenging for me to find the time uh, to keep up with, like, I've literally got hours and hours of dynamite footage that will make uh, so many great videos for my channel, you know, but for the last two months I've obviously, obviously been super focused on trying to finish my movie. And, uh, you know, it's, it's been very difficult. Uh, but I feel like, for the most part, I've done it. I've got it in the can. So that's really, really exciting. The next phase is going to be the editing, you know, and I really feel the film is so good now. I want to raise the bar for myself personally. A lot of times when I get into something, I try and get into it 
with simple and low expectations. Um, simply because like if I'm starting here, I have to get to the next place before I can think about the next phase and the next phase after that. So I just want to go in small steps. You know, the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. Um, so at any rate, um, right on. Yeah, the, the new movie is going to be great. And I just found this hat randomly. It's become my favorite Hogan hat, and I'll probably wear it out sometime soon. But uh, I've just always found these like caps just, you know, wherever, just randomly. Um, you know, but, uh, but at any rate, you know, with the movie, you know, I'm going to try and settle down for a little while, put up some good YouTube videos, and uh, talk a lot more about where I'm at with the golf swing. And, uh, you know, it's, I, I think that in some ways, uh, you almost have to go into a deep dive uh, before you can kind of come up and see things a little bit more clearly. I mean, I've done a super deep dive into the mechanics of the golf swing, but Bruce Lee said the height of cultivation leads to simplicity. And so I think I'm kind of on the downhill slope now, you know. I mean, golf is such a challenging game. You know, I still have a, a lot of room to grow in so many areas, and, and that's why I play the game. It's the game for a lifetime. And uh, Mr. Hogan said that he never played a round of golf, that he didn't learn something. And that's why we're blessed to be in the community of golfers that play. I'm honored to know so many people who are, are gentlemen. I think the game can teach us a lot about manners and how to maintain our composure when things get tough. And that may be the most important thing that I started off with my swing evolution was a promise that I wouldn't act like a jerk on the golf course. Because I'd had periods where I would curse and act like a big baby, you know, but by just getting past that to say, listen, you know, it's a tough game. That's the whole point of it. I got a tip from one of the greatest pros to ever play the game. And he told me, he said, you know what? When you hit a bad shot, Christo, don't go to your swing mechanics during a, a round on the golf course. Tell yourself, good, I got that out of my system. And I'm good enough now that I can feel what I did if I leave the face wide open, open and hit a big slice or something. I know what I did wrong. Or if I let my head drift in front of the ball and I get all blocked and stuff like that. So here's the best advice I, I got and I'd like to share it is just say, you know, I got that out of my system if you hit a bad shot. You know, and just, just try and keep going forward and try and get the ball in the hole. So... There's a lot of things that uh, I'm excited about that I can do now that principal photography for my film is in the can. Um, you know, I still have a lot of work to do. Guys, if you want to support the film, pick up, you know, the Hogan Code or My Driving Evolution. I'm a big believer. They're good videos. And uh, I'm also going to put a link to my GoFundMe account uh, because if you want to, you know, pre-order the film, you can do it for, like, a third off the price of what it's going to finally come out at. Um, yeah, for 20 bucks, you can basically pre-order the download. So uh, I'm going to put that up because, I mean, this is just, it's been murder on me. But, <laughs> but I'm so stubborn. I mean, I, I had a vision, and, uh, and I've able, been able to do it without uh, really having to go through the normal avenues like, you know, begging people in Hollywood for a ton of money or this, that, or the other thing. You know, but we'll see. I, I've got something very, very special. I, I mean, I really, really do believe that. Thank you, Gordon, for saying the Hogan Code is awesome. I appreciate that. And thanks, Joseph. I appreciate uh, your fine comments as well. So, but I would like to say that my Hogan film is in the can. I think it's absolutely unique in the world of golf or maybe even in sports documentaries. And uh, I think everybody's really going to learn a lot from it. I think it's a, a, a really interesting story. It's an adventure. It's a straight-up golf adventure. And where it leads, I can't even tell you. You're going to just S-H your P-A-N-T-S. It's like <laughs> it's the most insane thing you've ever seen in your life. And I really mean that. So uh, I'm going to keep on plugging away, working my buns off. It's the only thing I know how to do. 
and uh, I'm honored by everybody joining me on this journey. And remember, the height of cultivation leads to simplicity. And if you hit a bad shot, you know what? You just need to get it out of your system. So stay composed, stay relaxed, hit it long, and hit it straight. So I'll see you guys really soon. Awesome. All right, Sam, man, just got your message. We are going to talk Hogan one day very soon.